So question number one says that uh, the company uses the NPV method, the IRR method and discounted payback method to appraise its investment appraisal. An investment opportunity was recently appraised using these methods and estimated to provide a positive NPV of 10.5 million, IRR of 15% and the payback of three years. After this appraisal, it was discovered that the cost of capital was lower than had been previously estimated. So what would be the effect either increase, decrease or no effect on the figures provided by each appraisal method after taking into account the lower cost of capital. So we need to assess that what would be the impact of cost of uh, the capital on these methods. So as a result, if the cost of capital is reduced or the lower than what we have anticipated, the effect would be on NPV, it will increase the present value of inflows and as a result, the NPV will increase. So the effect of NPV is NPV will be increase. Now NPV increase is an A and B. So it means we have left with two options A and B. What would be the effect on IRR? As we know that IRR is an hurdle rate and there is no impact of cost of capital in the calculation of IRR. So there will be no effect on IRR. So no impact. So as a result, this option is also not suitable. Now, as far as DPPP is concerned, so the payback is three years. It means that uh, if we reduce the discount rate, so it will increase the cash flows and that will reduce the discounted payback. So my answer is increase no effect and decrease that is answer is B. Next question says that shares in A have an expected rate of return of 9%, beta of 0.8, while shares in U have a beta of 1.2, the expected market rate of return is 10%. Using CAPM, what is the expected rate of return for the shareholders in Uralco? So in order to calculate the expected rate of return of Uralco, we have information of Uralco. It's only the beta. So if you want to calculate them, then we need to have RM minus RF into beta. But if we have just information that it's beta is 1.2. The market rate of return is 10 per 10%. We don't have any RF. So how we can calculate? So from the information of El Elborsko, we'll calculate the RF in that. So their rate of return is 9% RF plus RM, which is 10% minus RF, which is uh, need to find out multiply by 0.8. So if we rearrange this equation, so the RF would be 5%. So put RF in this equation, and then we have K is 5% RF plus 10 minus 5 into 1.2. So it will give us a figure of 11%. Uh, so KE or the expected rate of return for the share in URAL is 11%. So answer is B. The next question says that L sell a particular product for which it pays six per unit. This is the purchase price. Annual sales are 60,000 units demand. The cost of ordering this product is 15 per order. Holding cost one unit per annum per product is three. The company's policy to have an order quantity of 1200. This is the order size. This is Q. What is the total annual cost in this product? So for total annual cost, the total ordering cost is annual order, which is D divided by Q multiplied by cost per order. So it's 60,000 divided by 
Q, which is 1200, multiplied by the cost per order. So the ordering cost is We need to calculate the ordering cost and the ordering cost is 60,000 divided by 1200 multiplied by 15, it's 750. Holding cost is average stock, which is Q by two into the cost of holding. And the Q is uh, 1200 divided by two into three. So it's 1800 and the purchase cost is 6 into 60,000 that is 3 lakh 60,000 so 3 lakh 60,000 plus the ordering cost plus the holding cost so answer is 362550 and answer is c next question says that a colleague states that when a stock market display only weak form efficiency, it has the following feature. So what is the feature in case of uh, the stock market showing the weak form of efficiency? So share price changes are random. The share price changes are random. So it means that uh, when a business uh, provides you a publicly available information, the price changes because the effect of historical price is already incorporated. So we can say that uh, first statement is true. The price is random. Share price changes in anticipation of new information being announced. So it means that uh, uh, as far as the weak form efficiencies, so they do not anticipate the new information because it shows the impact of the past information so it do not anticipate the information because it is the characteristics of a semi strong information so it means the second one is false and first one is true so under weak form efficient market the answer is second one the next question is s is listed on a stock exchange and is about to announce 143 right issue at a right issue price of 12. The current share price is 16, which is the come right price. What is the theoretical X right price to each original share? Now for that, the three shares are trading currently at 16. One right at a price of 12. So we have four shares now and the total price is 50. So X right price is 50 divided by four and that is 12.5 is right price. Now it's per existing share. If you have to find out the, this is the right issue price and the value of right. They are asking about the value of right so value of right is 12.5 minus the right issue price. So value is point five. So one minute, it's a calculation error. It's not 50, it's 60. So that means it's 15 and we have 15 minus 12 so it's 3 is the value of right and per existing share means divided by 3 so the value of right is 3 and value per existing share is 1 that is answer is b the next question is g is considering four separate investment opportunity but has limited funds that shows the capital rationing this means the company will not be able to invest fully in all opportunities. Each opportunity is divisible where partial investment is possible. 
investment opportunity is there, initial outlay is there, present value of net inflow is there. How should the investment opportunities be ranked if you want to maximize the wealth of shareholder? So for that, we need to find out the profitability index method. And how we can calculate the profitability index method. So in order to found that profitability index method, you have to use the formula. That is for ranking, we'll use the formula of profitability index method as the project is divisible. So let's find it out. One of the formula that we can use is the PI is equal to NPV over initial investment. So for each, we can identify, or you can also use the present value of cash inflows divided by initial outlay. You can also use that. So let me use that. So here NPV of the project is Two double one minus the initial outlay. So it's NPV is 25. And in the subsequent one, NPV is 84 minus 65. It's 19. So NPV is 20 and NPV is 21. So for uh, the K, we have uh, 25 over 186. For B, it's 19 over 80, 65. And for C, we have uh, 20 over 100. And for D, we have 21 over 50. So as a result, 25 is the NPV. And we have initial cost is 186, so it's 0 0.134. Next is 19 over 65 is 0.29. Next is 200 over 100, it's 0.2. And uh, third, fourth one is 0.42. So the best will be like uh, the best one is B. First, sorry, the best one is D. Second best is this one. Third best is this one. And fourth one is this one. So it means uh, the answer that becomes. F is on first. B is on second, C is on third, and K is on fourth. So answer is one. You can also find the other formula of PI, and in this way, you don't need to calculate the NPV. That it is also possible. Next question. To aid financial planning, of E has adopted the following targeted financial ratios for the forthcoming year. Return on equity is ten percent. Non-current liabilities is to equity to is to one. Total assets minus current liabilities is equal to current assets three is to one. Current ratio one is to one. Asset test ratio 0.8 is to one. The net profit for the forthcoming year is 500,000. What is the forecast level of inventory? So there are many uh, ratios and relationships are given. And we have to find out the forecasted inventory. So it means uh, we have to work out with these ratios. Now inventory is a part of uh, the current ratio and inventory is not included in the asset test ratio. So current ratio is one is to one and uh, we need to find out uh, something like that. So first of all, let's see what we can do with the return on equity and that is 10%. Uh, so in the formula return on equity, we have a profit uh, 
over equity. So it's 0.1. Profit is uh, 500,000. And there is equity. So as a result, my equity would be uh, 500,000 divided by 0.1. So it means it's 5 million. So I have 5 million of equity. And the next is non-current liabilities to equity is 2 is 2, 1. So it means the non-current liability is twice, that is 10 million. If it is 2 is to 1. So in this way, I have two information now available, 10 million. Now let's identify the other figures. So next one says that uh, total assets minus current liabilities. Total assets minus current liabilities is equal to current assets and that is 3 is to 1. Now total assets minus current liabilities is capital employed. So in this way, I can find out uh, the combination of that. Current asset is one as compared to total asset less current liabilities. So let's use this one. So it means total assets minus current liabilities is capital employed and capital employed is equity plus non-current liabilities. So it's 10 million plus 5 million, it's 15 million. And this is three times more than the current assets. So it means my current asset is Five million. Now you can see in the current ratio is one is to one. If current assets are five million, it means that uh, I have to assess now. There is liability only one is to one. So from current ratio, you can say that assets over liabilities it's one to one so i have current assets one i have current liabilities one so answer is one so i have current liability one and now i have the asset test ratio so asset test ratio says that the answer is 0 0.8 is equal to one so 5 million into 0.8, it means the asset other than inventory is 4 million. So current asset is 5 million and asset other than inventory is uh, 4 million. So the difference is 1 million and that difference is inventory. So it's basically the rearrangement of variation in the different ratios and the different combinations. And as a result, you can find out the value of inventory.